This is MJ and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this nice fluffy loop stitch pillow. This pillow is done so that your back, you can remove the pillow from it. Your back overlaps and I've got these little tiny buttons here that you can just pop through the stitches. You don't need to add any buttonholes and all that does is help us keep our pillow closed up. I'm just going to button it here. So once you button that up, you can hardly even tell that there's a seam at the back. It just blends right in. So now you have a nice removable cover and I could just see these made in so many fun colors. Great for either your family room or on your bed, really wherever you want to add some fun color and texture to your home decor. So the yarn I'm going to be using today is Craftsmart. It's a value yarn and I purchased this from Michael Stores. It's really inexpensive, just under $4 a ball. And I chose this yarn because I loved how fresh and pure and white the white yarn is with this yarn. And I wanted something really bright and sort of um, wintry, Christmassy feel. So I chose the white yarn, but for the video tutorial, I will use the gray so that it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. So you're going to need to get to buy three balls of the yarn and you'll also be working with a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook and the pillow form that I purchased is an 18 by 18 size. Okay, so let's get started. We'll begin making a slip knot and putting it on the hook. I'll begin by chaining 49. Okay, so now I'll work single crochets across. So in the second chain from the hook, so there's one, two, we'll just work single crochet stitches. And this will be the right side of our work. Now I'm going to assume you know your basic stitches for this video. So if you're not familiar, then you need to go watch one of our beginner videos on how to work the single crochet stitch. Okay, so I've worked across 48 stitches. Now I'm going to chain one and turn. So now we'll begin our loop stitch. Our loop stitch has worked on the wrong side. Just gonna pull some yarn through. You don't want your yarn to be pulling too tight when you're trying to make your loops or it comes a real pain. So to make your loop stitch, you're gonna go through the stitch, hold up your finger, you want a nice big loop. Yarn over and pull through. I'm gonna go through this fairly slow. So we're going through the stitch Hold your finger up, you're taking your hook, you're going around, pulling forward, twisting that down. Now what you wanna make sure is this loop doesn't f come forward. You wanna make sure that when you're yarning over here and pulling through that loop stays there. So go through the stitch, go around, Pull it through, drop that loop down, hold it if you need to, yarn over and pull through. Go through the stitch, take your hook going around, twisting it, pull it through, drop it, and pulling through.
once you get going at it, it does really work fairly quickly. And you really can play around with your length. Mine are going to be pretty fuzzy and loopy, but you really can make them any length you want. So I'm going to continue working my loops across and then I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so I've worked all the way down. We'll, we'll turn and chain one. And now we're back to the right side of our work. I always find getting the loops started when you don't have much work to kind of hold it. It's always the hardest, but once we get going, it does get easier. So now when we're on the right side of our work, we'll always work single crochet stitches across. So just, you can quickly work across and make sure you're sticking with your 48 stitch count. Okay, so we're going to turn, I've worked across, chain one, and now we're back to our loop stitches again. So all we're doing here is repeating a row of loops when we're on the wrong side, and then single crochet stitches when we're on the right side. I'm going to work down this row, do another row of single crochet, and then I'm going to measure up my length here to make sure that we're on track with the right size. So I'm just going to measure this just to make sure that we're on track with our 17 inch width. And we are, it's perfect, so it's working out the same as my white pillow. Okay, so what you want to do is just keep working uh, your pattern, loop stitch, single crochet, until you have a total of 17 inches. And that will be the front panel of your pillow. Okay, and your second panel will be the same width, so 17 inches, and we'll work it until we have 12 inches. Our third panel, again, will be the same width, 17 inches, and we'll make it a total of five inches. So you need to get all of these panels made, so that takes a little bit of time, but work up your first panel, of course, that is the 17 by 17, and then work on your other two panels as well. And if you want to follow along with the PDF, you may find that easier. And the PDF will also include your stitch counts for some different size pillow forms. The one we're working on today is for an 18 inch. You want to make your panels an inch less for each, um, so instead of making it 18 by 18, you want to make it 17 by 17 so that the pillow fits nice and snug. So I'm going to work up my front panel, and then when I get to my second panel, I will meet you up because we do have a section of two inches of just single crochet stitches worked for our overlap. Okay, so I have completed my front panel. So when you finish off, you want to end on your loop stitch row. And then just fasten off. See, I think I've got the wrong end. Okay, so this is where I fastened off. So ending with your loop stitch row, you want your front piece to measure 17 by 17. Okay, so I've also created another panel piece that is five inches here in length. And I've also 
ended on my loop stitch row. So what you do is you just measure. So again, this was 48 stitches wide, so 17 inches. And then I've worked until I have five inches in length. And then I've just fastened that piece off. So now my third panel piece here that I'm working on worked it the exact same way, 48 stitches across, so it's 17 inches. And I've worked until I have 12 inches of work. And now we're gonna do two inches of just single crochet. So once you get your 12 inches, ending with your loop stitch, you can chain one and turn. And then we're just working single crochet stitches in every stitch across. And this is where we'll do that overlapping section and where we can add our buttons just so that we can keep it closed. So I'm going to complete that row and then I'll meet you back up. Okay, so I finished my section here with just single crochet. So 48 stitches across, no changes to our stitch count. And I've measured out that this is about two inches now. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to match up. As you can see, your loops will all press down towards one way, hanging over the edge here. So when we put the cover together, we want the loops on our second and third panel to all be going down the same direction. So when we seam it, this is actually going over this overlap because we want this to be a seamless look on the back of the cover. So I've put those together and then what we want to do is have our right sides facing. So here's our front, all the loops going in this direction. and our back and all the loops are going in the same direction as well. So now what we're gonna do is seam it together. So we need to get all of the loops going to the inside. You kind of just have to tug them, push them in as we go. You can really join your yarn into any corner to start seaming it. Basically, the whole thing will be seamed all the way around, all four corners, all four edges, all corners. And this is the opening section to put the pillow inside. So I'm going to take a long strand of yarn. And my yarn needle. And I think I'm just going to go down to this corner just to show you how to get started. So let's just go into a corner, into the next corner, may not have enough yarn to go around the whole thing, but so we'll just get it started. So as you sew your panels together, just keep tucking your loops inside. I'm just going to go back through that one one more time just to make sure the start is secure. Really simple. We're just whip stitching now this together. Just make sure when you're seaming that just to keep those loops out of the way. So it'll take a little bit of time and just take your time. Seaming that now what you might want to also do is clip 
this in place. This is optional. Okay, so I'm getting to my overlapping section right here. So you want to make sure now when we seam this that we're going through. All three, I'm just gonna stick that there to kind of hold that all together. So we're going through all three pieces at this point. So we need to go through here, through here, and then also through here. For that entire overlap section, we're going through all three. We're just continuing to seam this across. Now I'm just reaching the top and we're going to do the same thing. You can clip again if you want to make sure that you are doing a nice even seam across. I think I'm just going to do the end, just do my corners, and then I'm just going to continue seaming across the top of the cover. Okay, so I'm coming around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip my corners. So I'll get this corner clipped. If you don't have any clips, you could even just tie it with some yarn. Use a stitch marker or something just to hold everything in place. So you can match up where that piece, you want that piece to meet right in here, the bottom with that first loop. Just get that secured. And then just keep working. Again, trying not to get sew the loops when you're going through. You want them to lay nice on the edges when we flip it to the back out to the right sides. You just want to make sure this is sort of lined up as you can see what's this row goes across here i think that just needs to come down slightly just so it's even all the way across where we seamed it on the other side so this row right here
we're going through all three sections with our overlap again. Making sure we keep all of our loops tucked as we work along. Okay, so as you can see, that's nice and straight, that seam along there. I'm running short on my tail. I might just go a few more with this piece. And then we can join on another piece of another strand of yarn to finish the seaming. So I think I'm just going to leave it off here. So what I'll do is I will knot this piece and then just weave it one way and then just weave back in the opposite direction. We can trim that and I think I'm going to go back now to the beginning where I started and add on another strand but before I do that I'm going to weave in this end that we started with. Again, weave one way and then you can weave back the opposite direction. And we'll just take another long piece. and join this on. And I'll knot that one to start. Okay, so now I'll just work across and up to where I left off here. This is really straightforward at this point. So I'm gonna complete seaming this together off camera and then I'll meet you back up again. Okay, so I have all the sides seamed and I have weaved in all the ends. So now let's just flip the cover so that the loops are all on the outside. Push out your corners. So you can see how that just folds right over so you can't even notice. Now what I found 
is that when the pillow is inside, it will want to pop. So if you have some buttons, you could add. I don't have any gray, so I'm just going to use black, small black buttons. Okay, so you want to evenly space your buttons, your five buttons across here. These are 15 millimeter size, which will easily pop through the stitches without having to worry about any buttonholes. And I'm just using some gray yarn and a needle. You just have to make sure that the needle is small enough to go through your buttons. And then you're just seaming the buttons to your single crochet overlap piece. And you just want to evenly, so I'm just going to give a little measure here and see roughly how far apart. About two, a little less than two inches, maybe about 1.75 inches apart. But you just want to seam all those buttons across. But honestly, it is okay if you don't. You just will require you just making sure that you pull those nice and tight and it goes to the back of the pillow. This just helps make sure that that back doesn't pop open. So I think it's just a little bit more of a finished piece if you add the buttons. But if you don't have the buttons and you don't want the extra cost, then you could leave them off. So I'm just gonna finish seaming these off camera and then I'll meet you back up again. And I'm just knotting them on the back to secure them and then I'm just trimming you could weave them but it's all on the inside so I'm just trimming those okay so this is the pillow form I'm using 18 by 18 inch I just picked this up from Walmart but really wherever pillow forms are sold or you could even order them online you could even do a nice feathered pillow form if you desired so now all we're gonna do is stick so we're just gonna stick our pillow now inside the cover what you can do is just find your button and just push it through this stitch now this would look a lot better if I had gray buttons it would completely blend right in. Okay, so even with the black buttons, it's really hard to see it's really hard to see them and this of course is going to be the back of the pillow so when you have it on your bed or wherever you're not even going to notice that so this is how it looks we'll do some nice close-up shots for you so you can get a better look but this is really fun you could do this in all kinds of different colors of yarn. You could use variegated yarn for a different look. 
perfect for your family room or your bedroom or home office, just adding some nice texture and coziness to your home decor. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay updated on new videos and tutorials. Thank you.